promise unto us. I will be with you till the end of times. Every day the Lord keeps his promise. He's a Lord who makes promises and our God will never stay away from his promises. Just feel his presence. And as we prepare ourselves to listen to his word, ask the Lord to speak into the depths of your heart. Those areas that are wounded, that are broken, that are confused and anxious, ask the Lord to speak. And as Samuel said, say in your heart, speak Lord, your servant is listening. As we take a reading from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 onwards. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him then he began to say to them today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we've come into the presence of God. We're all people who have come in here with a desire, a desire to get touched, a desire to get healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you have come in here specifically with the desire to get healed. You've come in here specifically to get healed. Those people raise your hands. Those who have come in specifically to get healed. Praise the Lord. Raise it up nice and big. Let everyone see it. Let the Lord see it. Good. The others, you can pack your bags and go back home. Because what is the use of sitting in the presence of God when you don't have a desire to get healed? We all need healing in different areas of our life. We need healing. And we need a touch. It could be spiritual. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be emotional. But in every area or any particular area of our life, we all require healing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let me ask you, how many of you want to get healed? That's good. That's better. Praise the Lord. Without the desire to get healed, there's no meaning and there's no fun in being in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is Jesus to us? You know, we are all people who look for role models in life. Be it at any stage of our life, we all look for role models. From this time when we were tiny, we've looked for role models. I remember when children are small, when I was small, we would always look at these super human comic characteristics, especially the characters who were superhumans. You had Supermans and the Spider-Mans all over the place. And when you're small, you have a tendency to idolize these things. Things that will save you in every situation. I remember when I was small, I used to have that tendency to think that if I have any kind of a problem, definitely I'll have Superman to help me. Initially, you always think your dad is the Superman. 
but as you keep growing you realize your dad is no superman he doesn't have the strength to do everything and then we keep idolizing certain characters and what we do when we are small it just takes a different form when we are bigger obviously i'm sure not one of you here idolizes superman or spider man do you yes or no praise the lord is there anyone who idolizes superman or spider man can you raise your hand okay praise the lord hallelujah but small little child over there has put up the hand praise the lord hallelujah i know my my brother's little son he's crazy about spider man and he has this tendency everywhere he goes like typical little children he'll start doing this all over the place and one day he jumped and he fell and his mom looked at him and she told him see you you will keep falling down like this you're not any superman you're not any spider man and he looked and he said who said i'm not that's because you have not bought me that web <laughs> give me the web and i won't fall praise the lord we are all people who idolize at different stages when we are small we idolize when we are big the only difference is the idols keep changing the role models keep changing but every time we people look out for role models to hold on to that's a fact be it at the age when you are 5 or be it at the age when you are 20 or be it at the age when you are 50 or be it at the age when you are 80 we are all people who look out for role models to hold on to but the sad fact is as little children we hold on to the wrong role models even as we grow up we hold on to the wrong role models we hold on to role models is because we want role models to save us in moments when we are broken when we are oppressed as little children we expect that the role models to come and save us even as we keep growing we are looking out for the role models to save us the sad fact is many of us hold on to the wrong role models we hold on to the wrong role models we expect the superficial role models to give us the comfort or a deliverance from the oppression and the brokenness that we go through in life that happens with each one of us praise the lord hallelujah 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 Dear brothers and sisters look back into our lives and see in moments when we been broken in moments when we been confused in moments when we've looked for answers who have we held on to we have looked for a savior that savior could be a human being that savior could be a thing but we've been looking out for role models we've been looking out for a savior and maybe we people expected a glorious savior someone who would just just swish through our life and would change things in just one swish of the hand we are expecting something glorious to take place i've always thought to myself you know the people of israel were always an oppressed nation you take the whole history of the people of israel they were broken they were shattered egyptian slavery babylonian exile time and again they were put to the sword time and again they were being being broken and when they were oppressed they always knew that they were the people of god that's because god made a promise to them when god called moses he said i have heard the cry of my people this is in exodus chapter 
It says, I've heard the cry of my people and I will answer. And all through their journey in the promised land, God kept answering. But time and again, they would be oppressed. Time and again, they would be broken. And that is when they kept crying out to God and God told them, we will send you a savior. That takes place in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. And that one from the line of King David will be your savior. And the people of Israel were looking out for a savior who will help them out of all of this. But when the Lord came in, the Israelites never recognized the savior. Why do you think the Israelites never recognized the Savior? Jesus came in as a Savior, but why do you think the Israelites never recognized Jesus as a Savior? Why? I'm looking for answers. I can't hear you. They were stubborn, okay, then. They didn't have faith, okay, then. Because... They thought he'll be a king, okay? They thought he will be Superman, yes, very good. Then, he will fulfill the prophecies. Their brothers and sisters, they didn't expect to see a weakling. They didn't expect to see a weakling. They were expecting to see the knight in shining armor. That man who will come through and he'll rescue Israel, having the sword in his hand and having a multitude of people backing him and huge army and who will give them total deliverance in one shot. But well, what they found was a little infant, weak, naked, poor, a carpenter's son. They didn't find anything great. Not only that, all throughout they didn't find anything great. Right on the cross, for them, the cross was a very clear indication that this cannot be the savior. He looks miserable there. He looks weak there. He doesn't look strong enough. It doesn't make meaning. This is just foolishness of the cross. As St. Paul describes it, the foolishness of the cross. And that is what they looked at. I remember... When I was doing my one year of regency, it's my practical training during the seminary days. I was teaching in a school in Maharashtra. And in that school, I think we had only two Christians. All the others were either Hindus or Muslims. And people who did not belong to the Christian faith. I remember one day the children kept asking me, my students kept asking me, they wanted to see the chapel. It was just outside the compound. And I told them, we'll, I'll take you to the church. We all went into the church. And they kept looking around. And then one boy looked at me and asked me, so where is your God? And obviously I couldn't show the tabernacle. He wouldn't have understood it. I said, we believe in Jesus. And that is Jesus hanging on the cross. And he took one look at the cross and with a very sarcastic smile, he looked and he said, that is your God. And I've never forgotten that because many times for people, when they look, they look at the Lord, especially the cross and they see feeble, isn't strong. He doesn't fit the idea of a role model. He doesn't fit the idea of a, of a savior. He doesn't fit the ideas that we have. But the word tells us, through a feeble nature of a human being, through the brokenness of a human body, the Son of God brought salvation into the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, the, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12, we read, there is salvation in no one else, 
for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah in first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 there is one god there is also one mediator between god and human kind christ jesus himself human who gave himself as a ransom for all praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all there is no other mediator under heaven or under earth from whom there will be salvation but the lord jesus christ praise the lord and how shall he save how shall he redeem by giving himself as a ransom so the cross is a ransom that the lord has given his blood is a ransom the extent to which our role model would go to bring you and me salvation praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah dear brothers and sisters i'm not here specifically to speak to you about how jesus brought you salvation you know it i don't have to tell you that but i'm here to just tell you that don't restrict jesus to salvation for your eternal life for god for the lord is not a god who is meant only for your salvation in the other world he's a god who's meant for your salvation even in your life here on earth praise the lord hallelujah we have a tendency to think that jesus is only about up above no don't restrict god to that don't think that god is only meant for salvation in the other world jesus brings salvation for you even in this world just as he did it for the people of israel whenever the people of israel were oppressed and broken they cried out to god god did not tell them you wait till you get to the other world and then you'll get blessings no When Jesus was sent into the world he was sent in with a very specific purpose salvation for human kind not only in the other world but salvation for human kind even in this world that is why we read in the first letter of st john chapter 4 verse 9 god's love was revealed among us in this way god sent his only son so that we might live through him so dear brothers and sisters the word tells us very clearly jesus was sent into this world so that we might live through him so we might have life through him now if jesus was sent into the world so that we might have life this life is not only an indication of eternal life it is an indication of this world as well and you and i are people who live in this world and if we live in this world we need someone whom we can lean on so that we can live our life in this world just like the people of israel we too are broken we too are shattered we too are confused there are moments in our life when we need answers we been asking questions and someone tells us all the answers will be given in eternal life maybe that will not be enough for you and me because we have to live in this world and let's not restrict jesus to being a savior only for our eternal life he is that definitely he is mainly that but our god is an integral savior Our God is an integral savior. Not only is he a savior for our eternal life, he is a savior for our daily life. He is an answer for our daily life. We people have been looking out for role models. We've been looking out for knight in shining armors. We've been looking out for 
things to hold on to we can depend on the sad fact is in life when we are broken we start turning to the world to help us we start turning to the world to get answers for prayers we start turning to human beings to get comfort or to get a bit of support do away with the things of the world do away with these supports that we've been placing ourselves with for they are superficial they'll go off after some time let jesus enter in to be a savior into every situation that you've been looking forward to praise the lord hallelujah 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 he is a savior first and foremost for yourself for the areas within yourself you are struggling with and we are all people who are struggling with different areas of our life we are struggling with different areas of confusion where we need an answer we've not got an answer let jesus be a savior for those areas where you're seeking an answer and if you hold on to the lord to get an answer for it dear brothers and sisters he will never disappoint you praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah